Okay, so our first project outside of the land art, this is really the first project that you're going to be um, really graded on with a rubric. And I'm going to be looking at all the logistics of elements and principles and all that good stuff. Um, this is also a project that you will be starting to use some of the materials you have. Um, so in your 3D kits, you'll have scissors, X-Acto knife, styrofoam cups, and glue of some sort. Um, so that's pretty much what you'll be using. Okay. So Starigami is the art of the styrofoam cup. Okay. Um, and it is sculpture created by deconstructing and then reconstructing styrofoam cups, bowls, and plates. Okay. So to kind of break down some of the terms, uh, deconstruct means to take apart, break down, destroy, demolish, cut up. So you're going to be taking the styrofoam cups and you're going to be cutting them up. Okay. So you'll be cutting them, you know, in strips, in curly cues, into flat shapes. You're going to be taking this cup and just making it no longer look like a cup. From there, you're going to reconstruct. So you're going to take all those pieces that you cut up and you're going to reassemble, reform, recreate, put together again. So all those pieces, you're going to put them all together to create your final sculpture. And your sculpture will no longer look like a cup. So I have tons of examples for inspiration. And there's a number of different uh, elements and principles that this project really focuses on. Okay. Um, so here's one example of Starogami. So this one is not my favorite example. Um, the reason for that is it still kind of looks like a cup. Yes, it physically would not be able to hold water. You wouldn't be able to drink out of it. But it still has that general basic form of a cup. So this artist, you know, started to deconstruct it a little bit, but they could have pushed it a little bit further. They could have done a little bit more with it. Okay. But these examples, these are totally non-cup-like. Okay. So we're really focusing on using the material itself, so the styrofoam. And okay. we don't care that it's a cup, that it used to be a cup, that it was a cup. And okay. we just care about the material, and that's what we're using. Uh, so one of the main things that you're going to be focusing on is your use of space. Okay, so we talked about space. That was one of our elements of art. And there's two types. There's a positive space, which is the areas occupied by something. In this case, it would be the actual pieces of styrofoam. And then we have a negative space. So the negative space would be all of our openings, our windows, all that empty space in between. So with your sculpture, okay, if you look at the styrofoam cup itself, it has no negative space. It's all solid. Okay? So you're going to have to figure out how can I take it apart? How can I alter it to create some of that negative space so it isn't this solid form anymore? So it doesn't necessarily have to be just specific windows that get cut out. You could have negative space that just naturally occurs with how areas are overlapping. Um, so in this piece kind of looks like flames of fire. Okay? But if you look at it, you'll see areas of negative space in between. So depending on how you're looking at it, from which angle you're looking at the sculpture, that negative space will change. The next thing you're really going to be focusing on with this project is your use of pattern and repetition. So pattern repetition is when you have a design element that's used over and over and over and over again. Okay. Uh, so it could be circles that get repeated over and over and over again. Lines that get repeated over and over and over again. Okay. And this is going to really help unify your sculpture to make it look like there's a reason why things are cut the way they are and put together the way they are. 
So in this example that's on the screen, you know, circles are kind of the big one with this. So we have these rings that were cut out and you have ring after ring after ring after ring. Okay? But then the ring itself is a circle and you have that repetition of a circle in other areas. Okay? Even connecting the rings, that shape is kind of circular. Okay? has the same idea to it. Okay? So here the artist really used that circle idea shape and repeated over and over again. And that helps create that sense of unity and harmony. But pattern repetition not only creates unity and harmony, it can really help with visual movement. Okay? So once again, one of our elements. Okay? This is the way your eye moves around an art piece. Okay? So you could have that be just with the patterns you're creating, but it could also be based off of you know, lines that are being put together. Okay? How is your eye following those lines? So in this example, we have the zigzag line that goes back and forth and back and forth. And your eye goes and follows it down the sculpture. And then it's repeated. So you'll move on to the next one and your eye follows that as well. Okay. So with the visual movement, you could have that pattern that literally makes your eye bounce from one to the next to the next, or it could be some sort of line that your eye follows. And all of this in the end creates that sense of unity and harmony. So this is when the elements of art are used in such a way that everything flows and works together. Nothing seems out of place. So with this project, I love this project because there is so much that you can do with it. And this is something that I've done with not only intro level classes, but I've had my intro, my 3D ones, 3D twos, advanced 3D students do year after year after year because there's so many options. Um, the only wrong thing you can do is to just randomly cut your cup up and randomly stick it together. Because right? if you do that, you're not gonna have that sense of unity or harmony. It's going to look as though you just randomly plopped all the things together. Right? So really paying attention to your lines, your shapes, your visual movement, all of that will create this sense of unity. Any questions? Any of those terms? Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's kind of on the design element. Um, but from there, you have a lot of options as far as what your sculpture looks like in the end. Okay. Like I said, you know, the last thing you want is just to randomly cut and randomly plop all the things together. You want to give it a sense of purpose. You want the viewer to look at it and feel that you had an intention. There was a specific idea behind why you put things the way you did. Um, and one of the first things to think about is how does your artwork stand? Okay? Does it have a specific base to it okay, where it can only sit in one way and that's how it's meant to sit? Also in this example, you can see that there's a very distinct pedestal or stand to it, okay? And then it has these thinner organic forms and lines and shapes that are kind of growing out of it. On the opposite end, you could have your sculpture have no defined top or bottom. And your sculpture could sit on one side, but then you could flip it upside down and it would still work. Or you could flip it on its side and it would work, okay? So with this, you know, it can look a little bit more chaotic, but depending on how you put things together, it can still work and make sense. Okay. Um, the next thing to consider is your balance. Okay, once again, it's one of our principles of design. So we have the two types of balance. We have symmetrical. So where if you cut it down the middle, it's the exact same as far as visual weight or actual stuff that's there. Similar design, same design, kind of like a butterfly's wings. 
Um, so if you like things that look more orderly, you could go more of the symmetrical route and okay, where both sides are that mirror image. Or you could go more asymmetrical where it's uneven. Okay. One side visually has more stuff. Okay. Maybe it has a different pattern. Okay. It's not the same. So between the two balances, neither one is right or wrong. It's really up to you as an artist to decide which aesthetic you would rather do. But you can also kind of combine the two. So depending on which angle you're looking at the sculpture, it could be symmetrical or it could be asymmetrical. Um, so in this example, you know, if you look at, we'll call it the front, okay, where you have these rings that are kind of jutting out, okay, it pretty much is the same on both sides. But if you look at it from the side view, definitely asymmetrical. Okay, so you can have that variety and balance. Um, as you're working with this styrofoam, you have tons of options as far as how you're cutting it. Do you want really thick pieces of styrofoam? Do you really want really thin pieces? Depending on what route you go, you can have a different feel. You know, really thin pieces will make your sculpture look very delicate and light and airy. If you have really thick pieces, all of a sudden your sculpture is going to look a lot heavier. Okay? Physically, it's going to be really light because it's made out of styrofoam, but because it's more solid, thicker, it's just visually going to look heavy. Um, I do suggest that if you are going more of the solid route, you do cut some negative space within just to break up that space. Um, in the demo, I will show you a lot of different ways that you can start to attach your pieces. Um, gluing is kind of the more obvious one, uh, but you can also create slits where you're sliding pieces of styrofoam through another piece. Um, so that can give you a really cool effect where the styrofoam kind of breaks the planes, breaks the surface, and kind of just creates a different design. Um, so in this example, I, we've got a lot of repetition. We have kind of this C curve that's repeated over and over and over again. Okay. There's variety because some are smaller, some are larger, some are thicker, some are thinner. Okay. Um, but then when it's placed together, you can see these little C curves. Okay. They're kind of protruding out of the bigger C curves. Okay. And that just adds an extra bit of um, interest to the sculpture. So any questions? No. Okay. Um, so materials. Okay. So scissors okay, are going to be one of your main go-tos. So we've got the scissors. We also have an X-Acto knife. Okay. So these are the two materials, supplies that you're going to be using to cut up your styrofoam. Okay, so in your art supply kits, you have an X-Acto knife and you have a pair of scissors. Okay, you will also need four styrofoam cups. Okay, each of you in your supply kit got four styrofoam cups. Okay, you can buy more if you need to. Okay, so you can go out to the dollar store, Target, Jewel, wherever, and you can buy more cups if you need them. But you really shouldn't need more than the four. Um, next, we have glue. Um, so everyone has a glue stick. Okay? And about half of you <laughs> have a bottle of glue. Okay? So with the bottles of glue, um, this week I will be giving you an option to come to the back art room door to pick up a bottle of glue. And I'll talk a little bit more in detail um, in a little bit, okay? But, you know, the glue stick should be good. Bottle of glue, if you have glue at home, you can definitely use it or you can go out and buy some. And then last but not least is something to cut on top of. Um, so this could be a piece of cardboard or a cutting mat. And I'll go into more details about that in a little bit, okay? So our supplies, our materials, 
are very basic, very simple. Um, so just as a kind of Cliff Notes version, um, you'll be cutting up styrofoam cups okay, um, into different shapes and sizes. Um, so depending on what you want your final look to be, they could be larger, they could be smaller. Um, because of the general nature of the cup, because it is, you know, a cylinder form, um, natural curves will kind of help you. You're going to have more of kind of that organic, curvy design throughout. Um, you definitely want to repeat um, similar shapes because that can help create harmony within your sculpture. So really think about patterns and repetition. Um, when you're cutting your pieces, you know, you're going to want to watch your craftsmanship, and I'll talk more in depth about that um, in the demo. Um, but you really want to make sure that everything is nice and clean. Um, if you have larger pieces, you know, try incorporating negative space, cutting holes, empty space, windows with it. Um, that's just going to break up the space and allow you to maybe see another part of the sculpture that you wouldn't have if you had the solid wall. Uh, you really want to plan out a general idea of how you want to reconstruct your foam pieces. And okay, so that's where the sketching comes in. So today you're going to be sketching out some ideas. Um, then after, you know, you cut some of your pieces, think about how you want all those pieces to start to fit together Okay, have a plan. Okay. Um, sandpaper is more of that craftsmanship. So we'll talk about that. Um, using slits and glue to assemble. We'll talk about that as well. And then uh, when you're using the glue, make sure you don't use too much. Um, and then last but not least, remember that copyright and plagiarism is a thing, okay? So do not copy the work of others, okay? If you Google styrogami, you will get tons and tons of examples of styrogami artworks, okay? Do not copy what you see. You can be inspired by it. Maybe you really like the little curly cues that a sculpture has, okay? Be inspired, but do not copy. Um, also with that, you know, don't copyright other things, okay? Don't make your sarugami look like SpongeBob's pineapple house, for example. I don't know if that's still a thing that you guys are interested in, okay? But don't do things that are copyright. Don't plagiarize, okay? You're coming up with your own ideas. Um, your final sculpture, for the most part, will be more abstract, where it doesn't really look like anything specific. Um, but I have had students in the past, you know, create their sarugami to look like flowers or plants. You know, that I'm okay with. Okay? But don't just straight up copy something that's already out there. 